and I'm just not a showman. I'm not really good in, in talking and you have to ad get it, uh, adapted to that. To, the, to, the, to my voice, which will uh, probably lull you to sleep. So I hope I will not be talking for, to, for such a long time, for too long a time. I'm here more as a practitioner than a theor theoretician. For me, as a scriptwriter, reading about drama, studying d film drama is uh, something extremely important. I'm always reading books about script writing. I'm always uh, delving into different stri script structures in various form of narration, and I do it. I did uh, s some of the of, of I did some movies, and every time I know that uh, each story is different, but each story can be told also in a certain drama structure but it's not always the same. So every movie should have a structure. Should have a plan for script writing, but the fact that we have three acts you all heard about, this is clear, but every time this structure can be either built by ourselves using uh, using the, the breaks that we know or uh, looking for some other dramaturgical solutions maybe using not only this classical mm, approach so the three act structure the, the worst thing you can do is go with the flow which is ho hopeless when you write scripts because this is how you write uh, novels and, and especially bad novels which go on and on forever at the end of the day, we're left with only one choice. We have to kill the protagonist because this, pa uh, this path is so long and so meandering that all we can do is kill the protagonist. And as we know, this is not a happy end. Happy end is, is not good for, this, for, the, um, for the cinema. This is horrible what I wrote here, but uh, I was forced to, to give you a title and subtitle. Uh, I do not, uh, th that it does not reflect my views. What do you do mostly? Sound, image, direction? Is anybody writing here or directing or writing? Yes. But you're mostly directors, yeah, I thought so. I, I discourage writing directors from writing unless you're really good. If you're really good, then I don't, but uh, do not, please do not trust your directing inst instinct because it's a different instinct than a script writer's instinct. Both these functions work in a similar way. Both, both the director and the scriptwriter, you know, the, the, the film dramaturgy is our clay for, for, for preparing this pottery of film. But uh, of course, the director should know how the scriptwriter writes. But the scriptwriter's um, way of thinking, it's the language which we use all, including the producers and other the departments. And thanks to that, we are not lost. However, if you really want to write, it's better to, to, to learn it professionally, to do it in a professional way, not to trust your directing instinct. It's something slightly di different. The, the director is a, is, a, um, is a corporal and script writer. It's quite the opposite. And these are the two different elements which cannot, which do not go well together. It, this is not, um, uh, this is not an accident that writing directors do not occur very often. But, you know, these are two different professions. So these courses are based on practice and on things which you do on the set. So 
and there is no script writer on the set. I don't go on to the set because the set, the set for you, for you, the, the set is fascinating. This is the water in which you swim. For me, it's horribly boring, and I just try to skip uh, sets of my own productions unless I get engaged as an extra. Then I see why I need to come because this is the 200 zlotys which you cannot overlook, especially if you're uh, on the uh, on the list of extras with directors, wives, and partners, etc. Okay, let me move on now to the definition. The definition should start should be shown at the start of the script just to establish one mode of thinking which we would use. It is something for which is important for me. I don't know if you will be sharing my point of view, which is not very important because I will be talking about my from my point of view. A, f a f script film is a story of a character which is emotionally engaged in something what they do, what they want to achieve. Somebody, a treasure, a goal, whatever. And the achievement and the uh, they have this need to achieve this goal. Uh, they meet their character meets obstacles. The, the, no, the, the the protagonist cannot do what the, what they what he cannot what he do. Uh, these these um, uh, obstacles are bested thanks to the development of Arctic, and this script sets gives direction and meaning and leading leads to the culmination and this is obvious for everybody why am i telling you this because at the moment when we start to write or what i start to write scripts these are the things i'm looking for in every story sorry character their goal uh, obstacles and some characters arc some arc of metamorphosis and i'm looking for this as so, as long uh, so long that i find it if i don't find it i would it means that i have no nothing no material for the film and if i have no material for the film i'm not even starting to write so for me the important thing which is for me for for me which is the core of what i'm doing what i'm looking for in everything that i write is the conflict of course it's a, it's, it sounds very banal that cinema is conflict that films have to have conflict that the characters protagonists have to have antagonists this is all this is all kindergarten but for some reason many filmmakers forget about this kindergarten especially in when they start working on the movie regardless of whether it's a short form or a long form. Only so that to troll through the story, start it and end it, and very often we uh, we fall into a trap, especially, but, the, but especially the writing uh, directors. There is a trap that we have to finish our story. We have to lead our uh, script until the end. And that m makes us fall into a trap of avoiding uh, the conflict. We have a scene. We have we. It's okay if we close the scene. This the, the script is almost finished. We're closer to the goal, and it's a horrible trap, and then we do not focus on the conflict. We're not looking for the conflict in every scene. In, we're not looking for the conflict in every story. Because it's easier to write a script where two characters are talking to each other and get to achieve something, rather than uh, a, a scene where two characters mm, argue with one another and achieve something. It's it's better, it's easier to write a nice dialogue without a conflict than with, with a conflict. A scene with a conflict does not need dialogues. The second thing is, the, the, the second way is much more difficult to imagine, much more difficult to come up with. You do not need, you, you, it's enough to have a conflict 
uh, for one for the whole movie. You have to have a conflict for every scene. So you have to have a lot of conflict. This is also a trap of modern cinema that we're making very contemporary uh, stories. And uh, contemporary stories, you know, uh, vivisectional psychological stories, make us in, it, it, we're in a very close way we're we're showing reality we're cheating the uh, viewer telling you this is a handheld camera this is a modern modern uh, uh, contemporary movie and you know it's cheaper to make but then we we try to write scenes in our movie so that they look like real life and the real life is the worst possible uh, thing uh, way to write stories it's a bullshit that the stories are lying on the street no on the street is long talking without purpose, meandering in dialogues, avoiding dialogues, avoiding conflicts. We between ourselves, we avoid conflicts and the characters cannot avoid conflicts. That's, it's that simple. If two characters are sitting at a table, somebody has to smack somebody in the face in the beginning because otherwise we'd not have a scene. And the movie, and the, and the movies that we like and we do, unless we're lucky, and we're looking high budget cinema for Marvel, tries to pretend reality. When the reality is long, boring, no conclusion, no conflict, and no finale. So at every element of the movie, we should remember about this conflict. If we do not have a conflict for every scene, It is a scene which you have to stop in writing, uh, stop our writing and delete that scene or improve it. Of course, we're talking about motivation, about um, motivation is important. And uh, it is okay. However, the conflict at every level is something that you should remember about. The directors, ri the writing directors should remember about that even more because there's nothing worse than a uh, script getting away from the conflict and the conflict is very difficult to develop because it's a it's a very film-like um, trick it's a very film-like thing it is the essence this is what they write the, the what they pay me about Dram dramaturgy is a process of managing conflict thanks to a, a skillful management of conflict a scriptwriter can retain uh, uh, maintain the the aware the um, awareness of the viewer or uh, attention of the viewer. This is the role of the scriptwriter: creating colorful uh, characters, uh, writing good dialogues, uh, creating good-looking actions or set pieces. This is all secondary, which can be done by somebody else. The di if the dialogue is horrible, then a good actor can improve the dialogue. The dialogue is always a suggestion. Each mm, inscription in the script, each, each uh, you know, stage descriptions, you know, things things get deleted all the time because they're too expensive, they go through the window, they go through the window, but the conflict always remains on the paper. The project of the conflict and the, the core of the conflict, the start of the conflict is something that will happen. It will be directed by the director it will be played by the actors but this conflict has to be searched for in every scene a scene with a good dialogue without the conflict is worse worse than a scene with a good conflict but with a uh, than a, uh, with a bad dialogue that's why we have actors for if we do not know what dialogues we have or we do not believe our dialogues they will take care of it but they will not take care of the conflict and this is what the scriptwriter is for in this whole business the scriptwriter is a conflict guy and this is the goal of our uh, this is our goal without conflict we do not exist is conflict necessary for the movie yes it is necessary but there are different kinds of conflict All that I said before is a certain script writing orthodoxy which you will meet during all the lectures uh, in all books uh, about sc script writing and, and filmmaking. But it is not always so. 
not always we can develop a conflict. If we cannot develop a conflict, if we really are not able to come up with anything, then we still have We also have those mechanisms. Uh, it's it's tension and paradox. So, if we're not able to have to, to have two people and both those people have the same thing, to achieve the same thing, they have to get in conflict with each other. We can always have can have a scene with two people sitting at the table and with a bomb uh, under the table that is ticking. Thanks to that. We have stress, or we have sorry, we have tension. We have expectation. There's um, and the argument between or the conflict between two characters is not necessary because then the essence of the scene is in a different place. We can also have the paradox. The paradox is a mechanism we put in one room. Um, a, a non-believer and a believer and we have a movie out of that out of the paradox but that's they, they might lead to, to conflicts uh, or maybe tensions but thanks to the paradox we are closer in the mechanism of uh, developing a conflict however the conflict itself is the most important if we do not have the conflict, then let's look for it. Then let's look for the sorry for the um, paradox or tension, especially in contemporary movies, in modern films, uh, in short stories. The tension works very well because we're not able to uh, in such a short time to to get our characters in a conflict, so at least we have to have the tension. So all these three acts, first act one, act two, act three, this is a certain, this is a certain uh, recipe for a movie, but it didn't come out of nowhere. Um, the understanding why we scriptwriters are looking for a conflict, why we filmmakers are looking for a conflict, arises from the fact how we sum up uh, our culture and in which culture we are being brought up. The structure of the movie, the three-act structure of the movie is not a thing that were ordinated by the scriptwriter within the scriptwriter's conspiracy. This comes from the conflict. The conf and the conflict has only three, three uh, stages. The beginning, escalation and the end of the conflict. These are the three mythical acts. And whether the beginning of the conflict were is to, to be 20, 25 minutes and the 25% of the film uh, in the end and 50% in the middle, it doesn't really matter. And the, the way we scriptwriters think about writing comes from how we tell stories not only we as filmmakers, but writers, poets, uh, uh, Adam Mickiewicz, Platon, all these stories from our um, cultural circle al always have this outline. They are, they are agonal, which means that in our culture we always strive in our story to conflict and to victory. And that's where the structure of our three acts come from. Which makes us ask a, a bigger question, what about other culture? And I will answer that question later, because what I'm taking to this uh, lecture, I'm taking only th these things which are to be helpful for writing. It's not a philosophical lecture. Don't take pictures, not at all. You, you can, but I mean, you, you may, but don't do that. These are the three act structures which are in every book, which are in every book in the world. If you, uh, if you read about the structure of the script, you will get something like this, or maybe something like, like this. 
And the Sitfield paradigm is like a total problem. I, I think that it's a, it, it's being reproduced everywhere, and it's like some horrible blemish that the scriptwriters or producers, if we make a, the, these like an average film, they make the uh, refer to these structures, and this is on the one hand it it makes sense. On the other hand, it's a horrible curse of our trade because it, it occurs that it, you have you have only this this works perfectly well and you have to follow this and this is not exactly true because you can have the structure like this this circular structure which differs from the Sitfield paradigm in that it is written in a circle however these are two different movies there are two different movies. These two structures can be made into two different films. Out of this structure, you can make uh, Star Wars or Matrix. And this one, you can make out of the structure, you can make Erin Brockovich. But out of this structure, you cannot make Erin Brockovich. This is a medical structure which works ideally for, for telling stories which are like very epic tale, very heroic tales. Harry Potter, uh, Star Wars, Matrix, they are all uh, circular in their character. Understanding the type of the story, uh, adapting the structure to the story is also the, the first and very important task of a scriptwriter because not all movies can be made into this and not all movies can be made into that, which means that we scriptwriters, we have to know both by heart. And these are several things together. It's another way of uh, thinking about uh, uh, s drama structure. You can see the turning points, drama points are in the same places, which is also a certain blemish and a certain problem because everybody's referring to those, those mechanisms and they do not always uh, work. This is a different proposal. Don Harmon is a an author of a very uh, popular TV show, Rick and Morty, and this is his way of writing every uh, episodes, which will c help us later because it's also a way to write short stories. You have to the short movies. The shorts are made in the fastest way, and it's for filmmakers. It's a faster way to tell to take to say something. But sh short films also have a structure, and the awareness of this structure allows us to make a better movies, uh, which allows us to best our colleagues who do not have su know that structure. This is a structure I, I quite often use. Not in s such a way that if I'm not able to adapt the movie to that structure, then I say, no, thank you, I'm not doing the movie with you. It is something that I, at the same time, have in my head. I remember about it, um, I try to forget about it, not to rigidly clutch to the structure, because you don't know if it's gonna if it's going to be useful. What those three structures have in common is that they all work very well in a situation uh, where we have a film with one protagonist. If we had one, uh, a film with one protagonist and antagonist, these structures are ideal for using it. However, structures in which we have a number of uh, protagonists, antagonists, or films like Body Movie, where you have the protagonist and antagonist are the same person and th then these structures are much more complicated and they don't, don't look like this the, but they all they all more or less keep to to this structure so if we have two characters if you have let's say two or three characters of protagonists, we have to remember that if we are use this structure, then we will have three finales. 
and we cannot have three finales in a, in a film. So this structure always has to be modified. And with a film where you have more protagonists, such a rudimentary three-act structure is very useful. But then we have to uh, manage it ourselves because there's no ready uh, solution. This is a ready solution. I made a, a third movie already based on this uh, outline. And I'm satisfied because one movie, it will be a film which uh, will be shown next year for a streaming uh, uh, streaming platform with the red letter. We wrote a script with the director in five months. Writing a decent uh, script is 12 months. It's not the... Uh, you can do something, do some things faster. This structure is ideal. It works perfectly with the for a story with one protagonist and antagonist. This is a structure which I've been working with for some time, but it is a structure which was perfected by Ola Kowalkowska, with whom I'm working on uh, Tandoni, who is doing uh, on Aymero, and she's right now working on her own film. And this structure came from like this huge mega corporation. And we were working with uh, with Polsat. They have, uh, you know, it's a corporation. They have procedures. Uh, you, we made a commercial movie. We made a mainstream uh, movie. So we had to have this, this uh, scheme. In the commercial movies, this scheme is also well seen. It's, they are, it's so it's functional because those, for example, sit field. Well, the, which is horrible. It's more or less the same thing. However, there is something that this sketch, this schematic scheme makes, does better. It combines the first drama point, and it's uh, extremely important. It's a very um, shrewd thing. It com it connects the first turning point that gets the protagonist out of his routine, it connects it to the finale. This is an extremely good um, um, trick to remember what we were making a film about. To write a script, I never start a script if I do not have the, same, the whole story um, invented. If I do not have the finale, I'm not starting to write. I'm, I need to have the finale first. But to remember what the movie is about, what is the ex sort of this what this finale resonates with it's this structure is very helpful because it connects the finale with the beginning if you're able to correlate the first point of drama and this point will express our idea and we're absolutely sure that what we want to say is this that this is a movie about um, I don't know loneliness or about something else this first point, initiating point, expresses that idea. That means that it has to be pulled to the to the very end and repeated for for the end. Quite often, the the final of the uh, the the conclusion of the film is quite difficult to come up with. But in this way, the fin the final is also described in the beginning of the movie. So this is something that I use for making movies. For big corporations or for for streamers or in the commercial cinema. This scheme forces us to, uh, to think about the, the finale. And the finale is connected with the beginning. So we're thinking about the whole story arc. Now this scheme makes the scriptwriter focus on that idea. 
this idea is sort of introduced here. It had to, it had to be pulled until the end, and that allows us to remember wh what is it is all about, or have mechanisms and tools to find our story. Of, uh, because we're not always sure. We don't know. We don't always know that. It, it's not always the protagonist that draws us to the uh, to the story. But it also means something. The story has to mean something, and it's all inscribed in the idea in the beginning of the film. Okay. And what about four acts? This whole schematic, the three act schematic, is, scheme, uh, is with us. It's a scheme which is always present in the culture of Judeo-Christian uh, culture. It sounds horrible, I know, but it's typical for the stories, for the Western stories, for European uh, tales or tales from the countries which have European um, uh, Heritage, because of course all these stories hail from literature, and the same it is I, I, the same you can see in the Asian cinema. The Asian cinema and narrations related to um, to Asian cinema are slightly different because uh, the this literary tradition is different from ours. It is not f our stories are not focused on. W they are not stories about saints, about kings, about uh, um, conquerors. These are always agonal uh, stories. The king at the end has to uh, best the dragon and uh, free the princess. It is always so. This idea is somehow gave the stories um, which our uh, uh, forefathers told to one another it made it, it made uh, it added certain sense and that's why we're looking for such stories and if you don't get them we feel a bit strange for example watching good asiatic films this the structure that we feel in ourselves and it's inscribed it does not work well there in there it is not always so Tishuken Tenketsu Kishuken Tenketsu is the four act structure I, and you do not need the conflict in any of them. Asian movies, just like our movies, European movies, Western movies, have uh, they inherit the structure from literature, and that literature in those countries look differently. It's enough to, to make the introduction, the description of the world, the character, the development of the character, so confronting confronting is not the right person in this context but because you do not have to conf the character does not have to confront with uh, with obstacles they do not need to be active the paradigm is such that the protagonist always have to be the one who's looking l searching going around and act uh, and uh, uh, acts in asia it is not necessary the development of uh, of character is not through confronting the protagonist with an antagonist or some antagonist force. This could be problem, family problems, for example. After which, there comes a sudden twist, which in literature and films is often... This is often a moment when we, the Europeans, are slightly... Huh, say, wow, this was weird. And the conclusion which is the end of the movie. So this, this is the way of to divide the story into structure. The structure is needed to, to plan uh, the, you know, the film. If we want the film to be fast, then we know that we'll have to have about 100 um, scenes. That means that if we have three acts, then each of the acts is 25 scenes. And it's very simple to calculate, to add up and divide. I used that structure once for a film which was not created. Maybe that's a hint for you. And no, this movie is, is very complicated. It was a long time, long in the making. I was not able, it's a biographical movie. 
a biographical script about a quite uh, important composer who which in itself who in itself is an interesting character and the world in which he functioned is was very uh, interesting but in this in the character because it's a um, it's a live uh, it used to be a living person there is no conflict there is no antagonist everything that he do did uh, ended in success he went from success to success this is totally anti-dramaturgical it's con counter movie uh, character a, a person who has only successes it's boring there's no escalation of threat of goal there's of stake and that's not what no, i was not able to, to lock this um, character into any coherent dramaturgical structure and then i was helped by this structure because thanks to that i was able to um, develop a film from so to sort of structure film from the beginning to the end so let me stress it once again this is only my experience but these tool tools are very very helpful i was not able to lock this uh, character in this uh, um, bio uh, biography in the three act structure and before i start i lock the structure i will i'm not starting to write because i'm afraid then that i will write without end the structure locks the movie it just gives boundaries to the movie movie uh, um, uh, you know, s starting to write without st structure is really dangerous because it saps away your time and, and energy. I've managed to, to lock the story and lock this fascinating but totally boring man in some uh, in some movie-like story. So if you can see these proportions. If 25% you would have the end of the first act, in 75% you would have the end of the second act, and here it looks differently. And these problems here, they are not, they do, we do not need uh, conflict. Here also the conflict is not necessary. You need a, a big and a big unsuspected threat, threat or a mystery or a surprise. This arises from the fact that thanks to this, we have, uh, at least we believe that this is the, the end, that is the moment of the of the biggest um, tension. It agrees with our structure to some extent, but uh, at this moment I've managed, in this boring life, I've, I've managed to force this twist to, uh, to, to, to come up with a twist here. The twist here and its role is, is as a stress test for the protagonist. If, if something so weird will happen, how will the character, uh, which we have known for some time, it, how will they act? It defines the character. And this is a very useful mechanism, which I use, um, and I used it only because uh, I'm obsessed about structure. And the structure, I'm sorry, this is not a scriptwriter's conspiracy because it comes from comes from our uh, cultural heritage. It it doesn't sound good, but it is so. And I really encourage you not to treat the structure as a something that you should uh, liberate yourself from. The scriptwriters say that it's first act, second act, and the director said, I will go across that. Yeah, good luck. Because the scriptwriter will come and say, no. In our search for original solutions, this is why we are here, not to make a banal movie, but our technical ways of filmmaking, we consider them imminent. If we're making a movie, we have to have a well-made uh, sound, a guy with a boom, somebody who has to get, get everything. But when it comes to the script, the director say, ah, 
maybe we'll try to some tinker with that. I mean, if there's a guy with a boom, nobody tinkers with him. But if you have a scriptwriter, you, you can tinker with him. But it's the same. I mean, script, a scriptwriter is a guy with a boom. If a guy with a boom will be unorthodox, uh, unorthodox with catching the sound, uh, the, uh, recording the sound, it, it will be the same story with the scriptwriter. It's the same mechanism. If you want to make a film with a good script, but an avant-garde director say, says, we will not do the sound post-production, this film will be a disaster. The same, this is the, it's always the same way with the script writer. It's the same thing. We are also the guys who professionally hold the boom. This is on one hand, uh, we the filmmakers. However, what we do and our names, and nobody will never go to the, to the movies the viewers never care about that. There are very few directors who are brands to which you go. People go to good stories, to good protagonists, good promise of a conflict or tension or paradox. And the viewers with whom we deal, but also like Polish, but also international audience, it's also uh, they also they, they also have their habits and when i watch a movie i have my habits you have your own habits if the film does not fulfill your habits in the, in the narrative sense or any other sense this is the problem starts with the audience because the viewer starts to get bored because he doesn't get what he was expecting so uh, w when the film is boring, we all promise that it will start immediately. I mean, what do you mean it will start immediately? It means that that this moment will take place. The, the first turning, the, the initiating point. This is the first 15 minutes of the movie. We're waiting for that point. And the viewer waits for that point too. If he doesn't get it, then he starts to get bored and he gets bored for the next 15 minutes and well maybe really something sh goes off but it's the end of the first uh, the, the end of the first act the initiation of the story yes yes uh, he, r yes r rejection of destiny yeah so looks how can meet, meet best ben kenobi ben, ben kenobi says you have to become the the jedi knife uh, and uh, the, he says no and here the uncle Owen and uh, uh, Peru and aunt Peru they are dead they, here they fly to to meet Han Solo and the viewer in, in un, unconsciously expects those moments if he doesn't get those moments because the director decides he's so avant-garde that he will not give the viewer those these emotions and this is what we are used to the problem starts boredom kicks in the boredom means not getting what i was expecting so in perception of the viewer those three acts even if the viewers cannot name them because nobody teaches them in schools we teach that we have the beginning middle and the end but this is where it comes from that because we, we write in such a way this is how we make films and this is how we consume the movies as the viewers and the viewers do not have to uh, they do not have altogether the mechanisms uh, named and defined but they expect them subconsciously if they do not get those mechanisms then we are in trouble so the perception of the viewer is one thing the uh, habit of the viewer is another thing but also this is also a mechanism for us for the right for the writers for the filmmakers it's a it's a signpost it's a guideline we have an idea but where is this idea to read was it what was it what it is to mean we quite often take stories start to work with stories which we read in newspapers that we have an 
an interesting idea for an interesting character. It's, it gets them to write. I will start to write without sense, without purpose, because without the finale, we, there is no beginning. And these mechanisms, these structural mechanisms, so dra dramaturgical mechanisms are just a guideline for us. What's next? What is needed? Because thanks to that, we see the path. Sorry, we see the road, the path. We have nothing. We have a great, interesting, strange character. But what? We use this. You have to go along that uh, that recipe. Uh, you have to tick all the boxes. I mean, you have to. You have to use it and use it against this model. Uh, either to follow it 100% uh, in if we're doing a mainstream cinema. And we're, thanks to that, we're not lost. We have eight sequences. The film has to have 100 minutes. That means I, I can't divide 100 minutes by eight, but you can do that. Uh, get down on your um, calculators. We divide the scenes. We know how many things we have to make. What is next? What is behind the corner where we don't know anymore where what what is there? You have to make the film midpoint. So, this roadmap of what can be done uh, with the, with a story or at all with a story, that's why it's useful. It's, it's good to get acquainted with that and not ignore it only to do something in an or unorthodox way. These are two movies that I did as a scriptwriter and and uh, and co-writer, and these are two totally different movies. This is a um, art house movie, the, f the first uh, feature movie uh, of scandalous documentalist who loves um, morally twisted, dark, um, ominous stories. And this is this, the film made for Polsat, for mainstream movies, for for with a big budget, with a well-known actor, a total mainstream. We decided with the director that we want to make a mainstream movie. We made a mainstream art house movie because we wanted to make a mainstream movie. And with every of those, with each of those movies. I used the same mechanisms. It's not that I came to Marcin and, and said, listen, where do you see the first, the second, and the third turning point? Where do you feel, see final? No, he was telling the story, and I just put that into the script, into structure. And this structure was unseen for Marcin, because he's a kind of director who likes when I say, but these are the rules. And he says, you have to break the rules then do it in a totally different way. And that was a certain problem. So I had to filter it through me and write against the rules somehow. And here th there was no problem at all. The director here, f f we, are, we, were, we did make, the th it's our third movie right now. And right now we, we have no problem with the, the, to communicate according to this scheme that you saw before. And yes, absolutely, you have to have this, that, and that, which minute uh, turning point our viewers are mainstream viewers. And if, if they don't get the first turning point after 10 minutes, so the in point that initiates the story, they leave the cinema, they turn off the prime, and they close the computer. So this film is done according to uh, to the golden rule, and the the other one not. The script is one thing. Then you have editing. This movie was edited. 
the director wanted to say, okay, maybe in the editing week we can go crazy. And the film was edited against the grain of the script. But this is what, how they what they wanted. They followed. They w decided to go with the flow, which you should never do. It's it's like the light at the end of the tunnel, but that means that a, a very st strong catatonic state, a very serious catatonic state. So I saw this first mm, version, and I made this. I did like this and they re-edited in such a way that it's exactly like as in this cinema. We have this exactly the same structure. But this structure they did it during the editing because this is what the film should look like. It should have the first turning point, the, point, the initiating point in the 10th uh, minute, the second initiating point in the 25th minute. In the editing they got exactly the same narrative scheme as in this movie and both and these movies are totally different for a totally different viewer this this one is actually done for one director because it's an art house director's movie and after the editing when the author tried to come up with something that has never been been there before they ended up that the end the best version is exactly the version that is exactly as in commercial movie Both movies had a very good sound engineering. So I don't think that all the filmmakers must know that, but this knee jerk to getting adapted or sort of this habit of adapting yourself to those to the three act structures to to include those mechanisms in your writing. It's one of those technical uh, capabilities that the filmmakers should have, especially the directors, because the director should mm, be mm, f well versed in every division. I mean, the scri script writer is a one man division, but it's still a division. He she also should know what the people are doing there. So when we're writing our own stories, let's remember about three act structure because they make uh, us they make us stop asking questions what would happen if what maybe I should go in a totally different direction because this structure is is quite a wide highway which will get us from the beginning until the end if we go uh, according to the rules. So this is the last slide. I don't have anything more to say. And now I can answer your questions. I have a question, a, a very important que uh, question. Do you need to have one protagonist? Because we s we saw movies of Agnieszka Smoczyńska where we had two parallel protagonists. And what I mean is um, in case of my script, which is being in the which is in development about uh, uh, siblings who have a s maybe a similar goal but maybe a ra rather complementary goal it's a good metaphor there are two ways to do that if we have a movie with a multi protagonist there are two ways there is no no other way you either make g make a rain man so those characters are totally different from one another or we're making uh, um, Saving Private Ryan, which means that all protagonists are the same protagonists but in different versions. So one soldier believes in victory, the other one doesn't believe in victory, the third one is cynical, the fourth one is does it only for, for, the, for the loot. So you have one character, but it casts a d a sh light on different aspects of the same problem. So good luck in looking for uh, diff different structures. I can't. I don't believe you will make it. Well, about the antagonist. Is antagonist? Does it have to be a role, or, or maybe can it be a thing? Can we have time? Um, no. I mean, it can be, 
but uh, conf internal conflict, which for us is most interesting for us as authors because it's most intellectual, the most vivisectional and most complicated is the most boring one for the viewer. The, the most interesting viewer is the physical conflict and if we do not have an antagonist, if really we do not have an antagonist, let's create antagonist forces in a, f in a form of a dispersed or distributed antagonist. We, not all of us have D Darth Vader or Voldemort, however, it's, it's, we actually, it, why we talk about Darth Vader and Voldemort? Because we remember antagonists from many of the movies the most. And creation of the antagonist force is the second thing that I do after coming up with the finale. Protagonist, okay. But without antagonist force or without the antagonist, we're not able to derive to, to, to derive conflict in the in the whole story. If we cannot get a conflict in the whole story, we have no movie. So antagonist forces are necessary. However, the internal antagonist forces are the most horrible ones. They're okay. They're interesting for us psychologically, but they're at the same time a huge heritage of literature. In the movie, you have to you have to be able to see and hear. Internal conflict is unseen. Why it is unseen? Because is it th there is no antagonist? Because you, unless you have a film like Fight Club, where the protagonist is the antagonist, but we know that only at the end. So there is a way, but also but all, at all times in the film where you have and. Uh, protagonist and antagonist, we have anagnorism. One thing is two things, or two things are one thing. Still, throughout the majority of the time, Tyler Durden is an antagonist. He fulfills the role of a mentor, but he's a meta antagonist. And we think that it's a real character for for the majority of the movie, and they, that's why it works. If we knew from the outset that that he he's just mm, an imagination, he's a fant phantasm, he's a he's an after he's like a, a yeah he's a, he's an illusion, then we would not believe in that conflict. So internal conflict. So it is necessary to develop a three-dimensional character. If we base our film only on internal conflict, we have run a high risk of monotony, very high risk of lack of conflict. And the lack of conflict means that if I watch the movie, I want a, I want a conflict and I'm interested in this. I do not get a conflict, I turn off the movie. So for the good of the movie, if you make I like a uh, surg surgery trick that for out of the internal conflict you can sp spill out this or spit out this uh, antagonist and and create the personification yes but it it will still be an internal conflict which will have uh, con some uh, like uh, traits of external conflict. So you have to create a, 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 an antagonist. Yes, absolutely. The character will be personified. But, but yeah. Because internal conflict, I don't know if you've seen a movie. It was called Pollock with Ed Harris. Ed Harris plays Jackson Pollock, a, an American colorist. This film is based only on the internal conflict because he is he's an alcoholic. It is there. It is a conflict of sorts. An alcoholic who fights against his alcoholism. It is a conflict because you have to close lock him in the room when you have to isolate him, or he has a delirium. It's like fil very film like. But this movie is horribly boring. Oh, that's why. Why? Because it's based only on the internal conflict. This character fights with its own demons and you can't see them. I am to come up to, to imagine them. 
And I don't like to think, because I'm, I don't like to go, we don't go to the cinema to think. So, the internal conflict is interesting, but it's literary, it's a, it's a literary heritage, so be very careful with that. If an internal conflict can be turned and granted with a character, then you should do it. So should the antagonist uh, put obstacles in on the road, on the path to, to the goal? Yes, he has to. And if, if the path to the goal, other people or um, uh, or incidents, they also make it difficult. Is this like a side story? If all these obstacles get combined in one thought, then yes, you can do something like this. But in general, the first thing that I would look for in this situation is trying to get the, to find the antagonist, a physical character that works, that makes decisions, and that is on paper, and you can cast him, because otherwise you have a problem. I have a question about the structure in a different um, form. How do you... I do not have any. I'm not an author of, of any script, documentary list script, so I don't know. But I think it's a question of, of some rudimentary structure, that beginning, middle and the end. Because in the movie, in, in the documentary movie, we d we do not look for antagonists because the viewer knows what he's look what what he's watching. Yes, I mean, and th this is also yes, exactly. It is a mechanism which is useful to know that uh, not to make the first act for three thirds three-fourths of a, of a movie and the rest is at the end because the viewer will, will see that and will feel that and when they feel that the first turning point is at the end of the, of the point that is a, a gross um, sort of it's cheating uh, the people so the, the view the viewers will send feel that I'm sorry, there is no microphone. Yes, it's the same rule. Three act structure, they do not have to be equal. The default is like that the second act is the middle, is uh, half of the film. So we ha if we have 90 minute film, 45 minutes should be the mi middle act. Well, why, why am I coming back to the structure? It is a bit like this structure. This, the short story structure is not linear. It is, uh, it is round. It is circular and has the structure of the first act. So in a feature uh, film, this is what the first act looks like. First. Short, short story is this, exposition, first uh, point is impulse, act and, and the turning point, but in the short story, the turning point is very close to the beginning. We start with a character who is unhappy, we end up with a character happy. It should be about 30 minutes. If we are talking about two minutes, then uh, that saturation of the conflict so is filled up when we have a dialogue scene, for example. One uh, character tries to convince somebody to do something. And so it's a very simple line of, of, of the characters. The characters can even sit at the table. And one character w w tries to tell something to the other character. This is a very static um, uh, setup. Uh, much better if we have two characters 
in a static sort of uh, um, a static uh, setup. It means that our scene will be about a minute long. I'm looking for two, at least two moments when one character tries to convince one character to something, the other character to something. The character says no, no, no. And what else? What next? How do you continue a scene? This is a moment for the first bit, for the first small change, for small interruption in, of the scene. In a scene where one see, per, the person tries to convince the other one, the first bit means that the first person has to change the method, the argumentation. If the argumentation is like uh, calm and rational, then in a bit uh, the, the, they should start to talk ir irrational and emotional things. So for the scene not to be too easy and for it to have a conflict, it has to be, you, you have to have a, a second bit, a second change of the, um, of the argumentation which leads to the ending of the scene and to achievement of what the character wanted to achieve or not. So I'm looking for that rhythm, dividing this the scene into two bits also helps you not to sit over a piece of paper and say okay if they if they quarrel i have done a to b but that's too little the scene should also have its own dynamism so these two bits is is the minimum The problem with a scriptwriter is that I cannot be surprised. I know how the film will end from the outset. I know who's the antagonist, how the antagonist is uh, mm, uh, shrewd. I, of course, I knew that Tyler Durden does not exist. I'm devoid of, of authenticity in watching movies because I know that. I know all that. That's why I don't watch too many movies because they do not surprise me. Before, between the things I do, I like to watch one of the worst TV shows in Netflix because they are crazy enough, because all these structures are there, but they're not done well. And this is funny for me. At least it's something, you know, if somebody stumbles on something, the, you, you should appreciate that, but that helps not you not to make the same mistake. And the, there is some joy in this, that surprising things usually happen uh, are the result of some mistake. And that's interesting. I like that, yeah. No, no. Uh, you only wind the spring once. If you wind the spring twice in a in a in a movie, it is. You can see the microphone in the shot. It's a technical mistake. That this, no. That means that the real goal is the second goal. Can you do things like this? Yes. <coughs> But 
It makes you have two movies in one. I would wonder if this second one is not more important. I had a mm, cork board, but it's always a huge problem when I'm moving. And I bought a, a software which does the same. I'm not starting to write a script if I do not have the ending, which means that everything has to be set up. I, it has, has to be divided and on a cork board and then I know I can write the script. If I don't have that, I'm not starting writing the script, which is a simple function. You just have to sit down and write. 